In this tutorial, we're going to do a short exercise. We are going to create a definition using some of the most common data list manipulation tools. We will start with creating a grid of points. We're then going to reorganize this list of points based on a certain parameter. And then we're going to split this list into two parts. So let's get started. Quick note regarding the units. So in Rhino window at the bottom bar, you can see that I am currently working in millimeters. You can right click here and you can access unit settings. In this dialog box, you have the possibility to change the units that you are working in. So if we type in grid in the command prompt, you can see some spacing options and these are all in the units that we are working in. So in document units, in my case, in millimeters. So it's very important to be aware of the document units that you are working in. So let's go under sets, sequence and choose range component. The range component has two inputs, the domain. So it's the start and the end value or bounds by default it's set from 0 to 1 and then also the number of steps so basically the range component uh, divides the domain uh, by the number of steps that we provide we can quickly have a look at the output values by hovering over the output and here we have 11 decimal values ranging from 0 to 1 Let's use these values to construct an array of points. Let's go under vector point and choose construct point component. And uh, I'm going to choose that the range output values, the numerical values will be the X values for the construct point component. So now we have created an array of points along X axis. And I do have to zoom in on it quite a lot because in my case, this one grid cell represents one unit. And since our domain is from zero to one, it's quite small. And all of these points are within that one cell. We can, of course, construct a larger domain. In this case, I'm going to use a panel and type in let's say from 0 to 10 click enter and then connect to the domain input and range component i'm going to zoom out the view so we can see all the points and notice that now the distance between the points is larger and uh, it actually represents one unit that you are working in so in my case, it's one millimeter and it's because our domain is set from zero to 10 and we divide this domain into 10 steps. Okay, so our next step is to generate a grid of points from this array of points. And for that, we're going to use the cross reference component. If you are not familiar with this component, I advise you to watch my last video. The link is in the description below. So let's connect the range component output to both A and B inputs in the cross-reference component. We're going to use the same input data here. And then again, let's connect A output to X coordinate input and B output to Y coordinate input in the construct point component. And so now we have constructed, created a grid of points. I'm going to grab a panel so we can read the output of the construct point component. And as you can see, it's a single list of coordinates. Let's go under params, utilities and grab param viewer. So the param viewer tells us that this is actually a, a single branched data tree. So it's, it's a list and it has 121 items in it. I'm also going to go under display preview and choose point list preview. Then connect the point input from the construct point component 
and also don't forget to change the size of the text if necessary to fit the scale that you're working in and I'm gonna turn off the preview of the points let's select the short definition and group it so that we know that in this group we have generated a grid of points and the next step is to create an attractor point so let's go under params geometry and choose parameter object for storing points i'm going to right click on the capsule and choose set one point and then make sure in the command prompt in rhino that point type is set to coordinate since we are not creating a point as a geometry in rhino but we're actually setting a coordinate in grasshopper and if you feel that you might need more in-depth explanation about the difference between these two types um, check out the link in the description below i have a video on that but let's move on with this exercise let's go under display preview and choose dot display to make uh, our attractor point more prominent in the preview okay so uh, in my case i need to change the size of this dot to match the scale that i'm working in you might also uh, need to do the same i also want to change the color i'm going to do that using color swatch so double click on canvas and call color swatch and then connect to the color input in the dot display by clicking on color swatch you can change the color manually or use this uh, pick and drop tool as i did when i select the capsule containing the point coordinates in grasshopper you can see a small gumball in rhino window if you don't see this gumball, you need to go to Grasshopper main menu bar under display and turn on the gumball preview option. I'm also going to select this part and group it so it's easily readable that we have now two distinctive parts. One uh, where we create the grid and another one where we create an attractor point. Our next step is to evaluate the distances between this red dot and all the rest of the points in the grid. So under vector point, we're going to choose distance component. Dis distance component requires two points A and B to evaluate distance between these two points. So let's input an A input, our attractor point, and then all the rest of the points in the grid into B input. I'm going to grab a panel so that we can see the list of these distances. So again, these, um, in this case, it's important to be aware of what kind of units you are working in. So again, in my case, these distance uh, values are in millimeters. I'm going to right click on this panel and create a title for it. Let's type in distances. And then the other one let's call grid points. Since the data is inherited here, this means that the distance from the attractor point to the first point in the grid of points is the first distance in the distance list. So or both the distance value and the point in the grid are associated with an index value of zero. So this is the matching order in both of these two lists. But let's say that our next step is to reorganize the grid of points based on the distance values. And for that, we're gonna go under sets, list, and choose sort list component. The first input that the sort list component requires um, are key values. So key values are sortable numerical values. And it's logical that numerical values can be sorted. So you can um, compare and identify which value is the lowest one, which one is the highest one, and then arrange all the, all the rest in between. So this is where our distance values needs to be plugged in. So let's connect. 
and then the second input is for optional uh, list of values to be sorted synchronously with the numerical keys. In here we need to connect our grid of points. So it's the output from the construct point component. I'm going to turn off the preview of the sort list component since now it contains points as well. And I'm also going to go under display vector and choose point list preview. And then connect the sorted list of points to the point input. I'm going to assign the proper size for text and choose to preview only selected geometry so that it's easier for us to compare these two lists. So now you can see that this is the initial list order and then this one is the sorted one and you see the indices changing. We can also have a look how this sorted list automatically adapts to the change in the position of the attractor point. Notice how the indices uh, 0, 1, 2 and 3 are the ones that are the closest to the attractor point. So the points are arranged from the nearest to the farthest. I'm going to go back to the default preview settings and uh, turn off the initial list indices. Let's now focus on the sorted points list. And the next step is to split this list into two parts. Let's go under sets lists and choose the split list component. This component requires a list to split and an index value at which to split this list. So the list to split is going to be sorted list of points in our case and here I also want to use the rely object. So I'm going to go under params, utilities and grab the rely object. Let's reconnect the wires and by right clicking on the rely object we can name it. I'm going to type in sorted points. Now let's move on to the second input which is index value. There are many ways how we can supply index value here but uh, let's begin with the manual input, we're going to use the number slider here. Let's double click on canvas and just type in the value. Let's say 50, click enter and connect. I'm going to turn off the split list component preview so that we don't see the overlapping points. Now let's create a custom display representing these two new lists that we created by splitting the initial list. I'm going to move to the start, to the beginning of our definition and I'm going to select dot display component and color swatch and using alt key, so hold alt and then just drag it all the way here and then create another copy and now I'm going to just reconnect. So as soon as uh, you see that as soon as I connect the A output to the P input and dot display, we have these red dots in Rhino window. I'm going to do the same with the B output. And uh, in order to, uh, for us to see the difference, I'm going to change the color. So just click on the color swatch and pick the color that you prefer. And in my case, I also want to change the size. So just right click on the size input and adjust the size to fit the scale that you're working in. All of these adjustments are of course optional and uh, if you, uh, when you are done customizing dot display I also advise you to select these objects and then group them. I'm also going to turn off the point list preview. Now we are ready to talk more about the split. So currently we are using a number slider to manually input a, an index value at which to split this list of points. Such manual input of the index value works fine here because we know the number of items in the list, it's 121, but there might be situations where the number of items in the list is changing and uh, it would be better to create a more adaptable definition. So let's 
double click on canvas here and use number slider i'm just typing uh, number five and let's connect to the range component a uh, number of steps input and notice that now the split list component uh, outputs an error so uh, the b output is empty and this is obviously because we are supplying index value of 50 but we only have 36 items in a list so our supplied value exceeds the list length and if we lower the index value then the split list component works properly again so let's supply the index value to the split list component in a different way let's create an adaptable index value i'm going to begin by evaluating a list length i'm going to go under sets list and choose list length component and i'm going to connect sorted points to it i'm also going to grab a small panel so that we can read the output now we're going to apply additional operation here let's go under math operators and choose division we're going to divide the list length value which in this case it's 121 and the second number the the number that we divide this value by uh, we can choose i'm going to use the number slider for that i'm going to type in from one to five click enter and then connect to the b input as always i'm going to grab a panel here now pay attention at the result so the number that we get is not an integer it's a floating number so how can we uh, feed this decimal or floating value as an index parameter well in a previous series we talked about automatic data conversions um, in grasshopper so grasshopper would automatically convert this floating number into an integer to define the index value while this happens automatically we can also have some more control over this process so let's double click on canvas and call the round component and just a reminder using control and alt keys and clicking on the component you can find its place in palettes by using this component we can choose what sort of integer rounding do we want do we want the nearest one the floor or the ceiling i'm going to pick the ceiling option for this example let's connect to the index input and split list component we see that the definition works fine and if we were to go back to the beginning and change the input for the number of steps in the range component you can see that we don't have the problem that we initially had where we were using only the number slider i'm going to change the division value let's leave it at two so we are dividing this list in half this tutorial is now close to finish but before we part i'd like to do a quick recap of what we have done so first we have generated a grid of points using the cross reference component then we have created an attractor point as a coordinate in grasshopper third step was to measure the distances between the attractor point and each of the points in the grid then we also reorganized the list of points based on the distance values using the sort list component we take the sorted list of points and split it in two parts so adding a short definition to define the proportions of the split and creating an adaptable index value and then finally we create customized display to distinguish these two parts in the preview if you are curious how we could divide these points based on their distances from an attractor point rather than the index value check out the link in the description below we are also going to address this topic in the following videos i will see you then